Thumbs up. Okay, I see some nods. Okay. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome. Thank you. So I think the meeting has uh, started. The recording has started. So. All right. Uh, well, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, we have a, a short agenda, which may take um, uh, may not take the full two hours. I think we have a, a full two hours, but I, I doubt it. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quickly and find the PowerPoint. That's not a bun. That's not it. There we go. So. Um, Gosh, I'm just going to do it this way because it's easier and then I can still see see you. So this is the the timeline that we're working with right now. Today is June 15th. We have the last work group meeting um, where we are going to just go over this timeline briefly and then we're going to review the public input website, which is the platform that we're going to be using to take the um, all the information out to the community members um, and set that up for the poll that you all have requested. So um, in a minute, Sarah Godfrey is going to walk us through the individual pieces that are part of that public input site. But we also have the draft of the public input site, so you can you can take a look and see the, uh, the way it's going to look. Then we have um, still on the timeline, the end of July for the community meeting. Um, I spoke with the supervisor's office, or actually, I communicated with the supervisor's office. We emailed back and forth, and she was very supportive of trying to find us a um, space available. We, and I spoke specifically about the um, Woodburn Elementary School. So uh, as soon as this meeting is over, I'll go back and report out to her, and we'll get that scheduled. Uh, um, and again, we're looking at the last week of July. I know you all said you weren't really interested in doing um, early August. So we'll we'll shoot for that last week of July. And then we'll open the poll um, after we have our community meeting. The postcards will be mailed out and then we, we said we'll hold the poll open um, through the after Labor Day. So the beginning beginning of September, close the poll. And then um, do our analysis and come back to you all at the beginning of October with the poll results. And at the same time, we will be writing our staff report, which is um, all the information that goes behind um, the uh, the components that you're going to see tonight. So um, it just presents the case for the recommendations that we're making that we're making and in our staff report will include the poll results. The uh, staff report is scheduled to be published at uh, the beginning of January with planning commission hearings and board of supervisor hearings either February, March, that early spring, I guess I would say. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and see if you all have any questions. Okay, I see no hands raised. Oh, wait, Edith. Just a quick question, Denise. Thanks. Could you um, repeat when the, the when the poll opens and when it closes? I know the mm -hmm. community meetings last week of July. Right. So um, after the community meeting, and I'm going to skip down to a slide that we had discussed the last time. Um, after the community meeting, we we intend on releasing the poll. So like immediately after. So we will put a drop the um, postcard in the mail that week and it should hit, you know, uh, within three to five days and that poll will be open. So within, you know, let's say that the let me let me look at the calendar. Let's say the date is. Of the community meeting is Wednesday, July 27th. We'll get the postcards to the printer on the 28th, and then they'll be out by the 1st, 2nd of July, excuse me, of August. So that first week of August. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we're holding that open, I think we said about six weeks to take us past Labor Day. Um, 
thank you. Sure. So the reason, oh, Sarah, Sarah, hi. Sorry, it said the chat was turned off. Otherwise, I would have just typed this. Oh, sorry. Would somebody mind just sending us those those two slides with the timeline on them so I can report them back to the Civic Association Board? Sure. Well, so every I, I uh, we're happy to send you the PDF of the presentation, um, but every uh, the, the immediately after this work group meeting, I post the presentation to the web page to, oh, okay, your, to the study web page. So it's always posted there like the day after. Okay. Sometimes it takes us a little time to get the meeting notes up just because it take, takes some time to compile those, but the, the presentation goes up pretty, pretty quickly. Okay, cool. We're having our community meeting next week, so I just wanted to make sure. Sure, no, absolutely. But I'm happy to, to PDF it and send it to you as well. Okay. Or send it out to the whole work, work group so you all have it. Thank you. Yep. And then um, the other, the, the one, let's see, sit, okay. One of the reasons that we are um, going to go ahead and, you know, move forward with it is that we we feel very, we feel pretty comfortable with um, where we are as far as our studies and um, our recommendations. And uh, one thing that we've determined um, at this point is to move ahead with the zoning ordinance with the recommendation that we um, reduce the height restrictions for all structures to 35 feet. And I'm going to stop there because Lily came on camera and I'll, I'll let her speak to that. Oh, Lily, you're muted. Sorry. Um, so in 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 our uh, previous discussions, we have talked about um, <clears throat> what could potentially go into the zoning ordinance versus what could go into the design guidelines for the ARB to use in their review of uh, proposed additions or new construction or alteration. And um, we staff still recommends that um, most of the um, recommendations um, and suggestions should be included in the design guidelines versus the um, zoning ordinance um, other than what we had done for the Holland Hills, um, which limits um, the principal structure height to 35 feet to match the existing height limit for um, single family detached dwellings. So anything else that um, may go into um, the proposed HOD would also meet the maximum height allowed for um, single family detached dwellings. Um, we have in the past uh, at one of our meetings um, demonstrated how height is measured. Height is uh, measured from the average grade around the structure to either the uh, top for flat roofs or if it's a sloped roof to the midpoint. And so there are different ways of uh, measuring height. Um, we, we did um, get a request or um, recommendation from the work group to further reduce the maximum allowable height for um, the principal structures um, and or maybe look at reducing either the parcel coverage uh, for lots, for structures on the lot. Um, and that um, we have found is, is um, in order to provide um, the level of um, research and analysis that would be required to make the findings or the support for us to <clears throat> look at that, we'll, we'll probably um, need either um, a consultant or more in-depth analysis than what staff is um, basically um, qualified to do because um, measuring the height of all the existing structures in the, in the neighborhood is not something that staff is qualified or um, the county does not have the resources at this time unless there's <clears throat> additional direction or funding um, that um, 
would be available to do that that level of analysis. Um, so having um, looked at that, we are now recommending that everything be limited to capped at 35 feet, but that means um, the ARB would still look at all exterior alterations, additions and new construction to ensure that it's consistent with the recommendation and the design guidelines. And we feel that that will provide the flexibility needed to accommodate additions or you know enlarge structures that are um, smaller in the in the uh, proposed um, HOD while still keeping it within that um, development standard for the underlying zoning district. Um, otherwise, um, anything we put in the zoning ordinance will have to look at one, um, how many of the structures existing already would end up being non-compliant because now we're uh, changing um, the height and the setbacks uh, or introduce parts of coverage. And also <clears throat> it would mean that it would require either a special permit, special exception or a variance in addition to um, uh, the ARB review that would still be required. Um, so the way um, we have drafted the zoning ordinance language, again, this is draft, is with the limitation of um, uh, matching the height of the what is permitted currently for single, single family detached dwellings for all other principal structures. I, I see some hands, but I can't tell who it is. So I can't I can't tell if Sarah still has her hand up or she has another oh. question. Um, so, but she OK, so her hand went down. So Edith, yeah. and I, I see Edith. OK, hi, Lily. So um, I understand and I think we did talk before about just what it would take to survey all of the existing homes um, for their heights. Um, but I think several of us have shared that 35, you know, given this is a mid-century flat roofed um, neighborhood with a lot of single story and even the double stories are incredibly modest. Um, 34 almost doubles the height of some of the, well, definitely doubles the height of quite a few, all of the single story, but also um, doubles the height of um, many of the two story structures. So it's, it's a, it's a big volume and one need only look at our upper homes run drive um, combination of two homes right next door to each other to really see just how dramatic that is. So I know we've talked about the fact that there are no resources on the county side to measure these. I know we've um, forwarded drawings that the existing drawings, um, I don't know, you know, I'm not sure what it would take to try to do that survey. And I know we're late in the game now. So I guess the last question would be, is it ever possible to do that retroactively? Or does that just, is that just so out of the, you know, so to go for, since we're so close, but this is just one aspect that we can't, we can't seem to get either the resources or the actual survey done in time. Um, but it is a, it's kind of a big deal if it's left open. I, the design guidelines notwithstanding, I understand that completely that, you know, coming before an ARB, people would be encouraged to go low. And, and to be honest, in good faith, if you're trying to um, stick to the characteristics of the mid-century modern home, it's egregious to have something taller. Um, but we have had some issues in the neighborhood with, you know, well-intentioned um, additions where the pitch is just off and so it starts screaming up towards that height and it's it, it's it's very obvious um and and it isn't captured it's not like it's a captured third floor so it is something that one would wonder you know would it could it be brought down and i think maybe if there were a height restriction that might push that a little bit more so um but obviously the the big one for the 35 foot height limit is that were somebody to get a special permit to do different use in the neighborhood, that 
they wouldn't try to capitalize on that height. And I think that's the big worry. You know, we're moving towards a more urbanized county. Um, duplexes are, you know, either allowed or soon to be allowed. I mean, Arlington, which is just east of us, is talking about eight plexes. If we move towards that direction and we don't have a height restriction, I mean, that's as good as done, I think. <laughs> so. Um, so I think the, um, just to clarify, even with the height restriction, um, you know, if, if duplexes and other more dense um, development is permitted, that would have another layer of review process, including but not limited to a rezoning, at which time the height would be um, visited again um, as part of a zoning ordinance amendment, not related to the historic overlay district. It would be its own zoning ordinance amendment. As a site, um, you're talking about a site specific one. In the, in the event that somebody asks for a special permit. A site specific one or even the countywide if, you know, in a single family, for example, the R1, R2, R, R4, um, up to R4, uh, in fact, R5 and up, s only allows one unit per lot. So okay. if that were to change, it would definitely require a rezoning and a lot more um, um, outreach and public hearing process and that that will happen with um, the additional review and um, you know analysis mm -hmm. before we can we can reduce or increase the height. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention was you know why staff strongly feels that the design guideline would have a more uh, positive. Um, you know, result yeah. is even if we put the height limit, let's say hypothetically we reduce the height limit, it doesn't, the, the zoning ordinance height limit by itself does not guarantee that the structure would be designed to be compatible and uh, respectful of the existing character and design of the HOD. Um, height limit by itself would allow something, but it could completely not be compatibly designed and it could render the structure not con contributing, um, even though it meets the height limit. But we we hope that, you know, in negotiating with the ARB and working with the ARB, um, we will end up getting designs that are compatible while meeting the needs of, you know, the, the property owners and the residents in getting that additional um, space that they need, but not having to go through another layer of a discretionary review like an SP special permit or a variance to get to that point. So we're starting off with the 35 feet, but they could design it to be lower or set back a little bit more from the existing structure to, to at least keep that character in scale of the existing structure. Um, what I would uh, hope that from the poll, if if there is still um, support for additional height restriction or additional setback, there's other ways than just parcel coverage. We don't typically have parcel coverage for uh, residential development, but you know. Uh, maybe reducing the uh, setbacks from the R4, from the R3 to the R2, that has a lot bigger setback. Um, if, uh, that could be one way of looking at it, but if there's a lot of request from the community, maybe in the poll, they could suggest that they would like to see additional, there's a, um, and we're gonna go through the poll, uh, in a bit, but there is a, uh, a space for comments. And if we see that, maybe that would be something to take to the supervisor um, for the district and, and revisit this issue and see if there's, um, you know, direction and funding and uh, resources to do the research. But keeping in mind still that um, getting the HOD established within the timeline that we have set right now would be critical so that we um, can get the uh, 
if adopted by the board, of course, um, that we get that protection in place. Mm -hmm. And then we can either, um, given the timeline, either um, do the additional analysis if um, endorsed by the supervisor, or we can do it as a follow on uh, motion with with revisited zoning ordinance amendments and other amendments uh, that were approved by the board. They have asked staff to come back in about 18 months, take a look at how things are going. You know, are we getting a lot of new construction and is this um, HOD doing what it's supposed to do or not? So we can do another reporting to the board um, at that time. So there are options to look at different things um, down the line. Thank you for that. So if I understand correctly, there's um, little support on the county side, both financially and sort of just moxie wise to to pursue a height restriction, but that if the community, if there's a preponderance of of people in the community who ask for that and it's, it's yet to be seen whether that's their own comments or if there's a box they can check. Are you interested in the height restriction um, that we would still move forward with the the existing timeline? And that if in the event that a majority of the people say, hey, we really would like to look at a, a height restriction as well, there would be another chance to incorporate that into the HOD maybe 18 months out. So, yeah, two things. One, it County. could it could we could keep potentially the current timeline and look at it as a follow on or we can do the analysis and push the timeline a little bit more. Um, I won't be able to say for sure right now which direction, which, what will work, but at least these are the different options that we can consider. Okay, but it sounds like the first thing is the community has to ask for it. Almost a majority of the community has we, to. It's good to gauge the community as well to find out if there's support for it. Again, um, you know, the final decision would be the result of the analysis, and then it would be the board's um, decision as to whether to to go that route and add right. additional yeah. restriction. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think at this point we really need um, some direction from the supervisor if we want if if the community continues to want uh, desire to to put further restrictions in the zoning ordinance. Um, so that that's where where we are. Understood. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lily. OK, um, so with that, um, and as we said, we're going to try to keep the current timeline as we've um, just shared with you. Uh, I'm going to ask Sarah to share her screen and um, show us the public input. Hi, Sarah. The public input site. Hi, everyone. I just realized I was still muted. I am pulling up the public input page. Doo -doo. Let me refresh. OK. So this is the drafted form. Um, we've put in pretty much everything we can at this point, um, but the, there's definitely still some holes that you will see. So um, at the top, we have this little intro piece um, for all the neighbors to be able to read. And then we have several different tabs and I'll walk through all these. Um, but whoever's going to take the poll will have to navigate through each tab by scrolling down and clicking continue at the bottom. So first um, first piece that this kicks off with is the letter from the Civic Association. So once that is ready to go, um, that's where it will go. And then Sarah, I uh, Sarah's Sarah uh, Jablin's hand is up. I'm just going to. OK, yeah, pause, if I can yeah, pause you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, we're we're pretty close to done with that letter. Um, uh, David, you probably got my my edits this morning. And I sent our edits to David last night, I believe. Right, he sent those to me and then okay. I 
I, I submitted edits on top of that. Great, great. To Thanks. make it shorter and, and to flow a little smoother. Thank you. Uh, oh, so Sarah's your, your hand is still up, just FYI. OK, so the next tab is background and bound the boundary, the proposed boundary. So there's a little bit of an explanation here. About, if, oh, yeah. Can, yeah, can I pause there? I just want to say that that 70% is highlighted and in red because uh, it talks about the petition that was originally presented um, to the supervisor, to Supervisor Smith. And I I don't know what the percentage was. Um, and, I'm, and I apologize, you, you may have told me, but it, there's just a holding point there. If um, you all could tell me what percentage of the neighborhood supported the initiative, then we can uh, change that to whatever it was. Thanks, yeah, David's got that number. Okay, great, thanks. Sorry, Sarah. No, no, no worries. Um, so this is the boundary map here, so folks can see what that looks like. And, and to clarify, this is the study area boundary map. So it has the National Register District along with the uh, other parcels that were not included in the National Register, but were included in the study. And those are indicated in the legends. Um, and then we there's a little bit the background continues. There's a little bit about the board authorization, and we will include a link to that. We have a little bit about the work group and the history of homes run acres as well. We have a few frequently asked questions. This should help kind of familiarize people if they have any outstanding um, you know, points of confusion or need some clarification. This should help with that. There's also this graphic about what requires a building permit, since that often comes up. And then also the contributing versus non-contributing properties. And with that, we've added this map that shows um, which properties are contributing and non-contributing, and then there we will also include a PDF of an actual list of the properties. Any questions so far since I can't see? <laughs> I don't see anybody's hand raised at this point. And just, oh wait, his hand is raised, but let me just clarify. Um, the PDF is, the, the list is um, generated. Uh, we were just, there was some difficulties with trying to get the PDFs to link. So we have the information, it just, um, uh, we're not able to plug it in, but we're we're working on it. Um, Edith, I'm sorry. Sorry, um, my question is twofold. One, is this also, is this draft poll available on the website yet, or is that being held back on the county HRA, HRA HOD website or link? It It is not on the county website yet. So the um, first was to bring it to you all. Right. Yeah. Uh and so I'm guessing it won't be published as part of this. Um, well, it will be as part of the video of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are either of the of the maps of the plans available either as a PDF or a screen grab? And I say that because I have a couple of meetings coming up. Um, sure. So, meaning the the map at the beginning with the study area boundaries, and then this map with the contributing and non contributing boundaries. Okay. Uh, yeah, I there, I don't see any reason that we can't share it. it. It they're you know both draft. They're both being vetted, but that that is the point. So. Yeah, and it says draft on it, which is fine, perfectly fine, but that would help in some of the meetings that I have. I appreciate it. Sure. I'll, I'll get you offline and ask for that. Thank okay. you. Alrighty. To the next tab. So 
this one has will have all the draft language. Um, so first we have the zoning ordinance amendment proposed language. This is this is um, what's drafted for that is right here. And then we will have the comprehensive plan amendment language and the rezoning language here as well, which will probably be PDFs linked under each um, paragraph that kind of explains what it is. Next tab explains the building permit process and ARV review. So with this little flowchart gives a little bit of a visual as to how that process works. And there's also some links for more information. And then the next tab is the design guidelines. Um, so this just explains what they are um, and we will have a PDF link to that as well. This is just a shot of the, the cover of the design guidelines. And I'm going to jump in here sure. real quick, Sarah. So um, I did receive the latest draft of the design guidelines in response to the last time um, Sarah Vonish was with us and, and received you your comments. So she sent that to me um, late last week and I have it available and I'll be sending it out to the work group members shortly for your review. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, sure. All right, and then that's the last informational tab. Um, then we arrive at the poll, um, and this was, as you, as you may recall from previous meeting, we talked about what, what information we wanted to have required. So we have the first name, last name, email address, and phone number as optional, and then there's also the street address as well. Um, so that will allow us to, you know, vet them and make sure we don't have duplicates. And then so those are required to take the poll, the ones with asterisks. And then um, we dive into the questions and we landed on basically three pieces. So there's how informed you feel about the potential HOD. And it's, you know, just sliding scale so people can move it to their comfort level. Um, and then there's the main, do you support the HOD question? And then we also have this open-ended comment box area if people would like to share any additional thoughts. So, um, for example, the height restrictions, which we just, just discussed, this would be um, from my perspective, a, a place where people could put that in. So, any questions on that? Uh, Sarah, Sarah has a question. Um, I, I was just going to say that I think the easiest way to incorporate a height restriction question is to have like a checkbox, like, you know, and maybe an additional question of like, I support, I would support a height restriction as an additional design guideline, something like that. So, um, it, uh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate what you're saying. And, and it, we could add another question. Um, it would be a, in the zoning ordinance, and I feel like we'd need to put um, some, some uh, pretty explanatory text around it that, that the zoning ordinance is, um, if you have an additional restriction in the zoning ordinance, then if you want to go over that restriction, you're going to have to seek uh, some kind of relief from that, either you know, through a special permit, special exception, or a variance, um, where if the if it's just in the design guidelines and you you stay within the 35 feet limit, then then you're not talking about another process on top of the ARB review. So in the zoning ordinance, it would be uh, having to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals to 
get any kind of relief from that additional restriction. So I, I kind of feel like we'd have to put a lot of text around that, um, which is OK, we can do that. Um, Lily, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, by putting putting a specific question in there about the zoning ordinance? Because I feel like we just need to like make it clear that we've got what what the process is if we do put uh, additional restrictions in there. I yeah. totally agree. Yes, that that would be um, necessary for for the community to understand. Um, we could maybe go over it um, at the community meeting and explain that, but I, I feel like we do need to provide additional direction, description and explanation um, next to that question. Right, if we if we were going to put a question in there specifically about zoning ordinance changes. Um, Edith, okay. yeah, yeah, I see <laughs> Edith. Um, did you have something to add? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I think that a, a simple way I so obviously I support Sarah, you know, Sarah's idea of doing a question, but I, I think I agree that you'd have to put some clarification so people really fundamentally understand the difference between a de design guideline and a zoning ordinance um, change. I, I think that's super important to clarify, but I think it could be done in something as simple as, you know, the existing two story um, homes run acres home is under 25 feet in height, which is true for the Bodors, which are our biggest ones, as well as the two-story um, Lurias. I think actually the two-story Lurias are closer to 19 to 20 feet. So 25 really throws a few extra feet there for good measure um, and keeps it a little bit more um, vague. But, um, you know, I think then you could just say, so this is the, the existing home is this. Um, the current zoning allows 35 feet would you support a reduction in the zoning ordinance to reduce the, the 30 to cap the height or reduce the 35 foot or whatever you want to say period and then you could just say please note that a, a zoning ordinance change would necessitate um a special permit would you want to exceed it and i think that could be you know i think that could be summarized in in just a few sentences um but Anyway, I'm not sure if it would necessitate a whole lot more um, verbiage, you know, because I think as long as you have the, as long as you make it amply clear that zoning is different than than the design guidelines, um, which are a review and a guidance guideline, um, you know. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, there have been a lot of questions regarding the design guidelines that lead me to believe people still believe that the design guideline, guidelines themselves might be zoning um, changes, or, or people just fundamentally don't understand the difference between the two in terms of when you apply when you uh, when you uh, apply for a building permit, what what's what. So, I mean, maybe there needs to be some front end clarification of that anyway. But the long story, or the long story short, is I think it'd be easy to ask that question and and make a very distinct um, comment to show clarification between the zoning ordinance and a, and a guideline. So anyway. Okay, that's, uh, no, great. that's great feedback from, from both you, you and Sarah. So I, I'm curious, can we go back and look at what we say about the design guidelines and what we say about the zoning ordinance and whether we need to put some information around in, in, in at those places in the public input? Because I, I imagine, as Lily points out, we're going to have a conversation at the community meeting and we're going to explain all of these things. But, you know, this is this is our profession. You all have been taking this journey with us for over a year now or maybe close to two years now. So you're well versed in it. But somebody who's coming into this like really um, as a novice, I want to make sure that they can really understand you know what what it is that with the distinction that we're trying to to draw um between the design guidelines and a zoning ordinance and what that special permit process means <laughs> like like edith you were just saying you know 30 to 90 days that that would be added onto any any permit um so sarah could could what could i look at could you go back to where what we say about the yeah the design guidelines and 
30 to 90 days would not be added on if you did, if, you know, if you were not trying to exceed whatever the height cap was. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. So, yes, so exactly. But to be clear about that too, that, you know, if, if we adopt a zoning change that carries with it a height restriction, it would be above and beyond what is required currently in the zoning for our R3 single family detached homes. However, if one were to stay within the new height restriction, whatever that is, 25, 30 feet, whatever it is, um, the, the, the one that's different than the the one that's in the books now, the 35 feet, that changing that would necessarily, only changing that, not, not the whole permit itself, but just changing that if you were trying to exceed it would require, you know, the process that is reserved for special, for special permits. Um, because my hunch is, you know, if, if we were to, if we'd had the time and the budget or whatever to canvas this entire 350 homes, you would find very few homes uh, well, certainly none of the contributing homes would be, um, you know, mm -hmm. up at the 35 foot level or probably not even in excess of 25 feet. So, so I, I just, I, I guess what I'm saying is I think it's early on in this process, we identified that as, you know, a vulnerability for the neighborhood to leave that 35 foot height in it. And I understand the hesitance to, to go through the process of a zoning ordinance change. I, I, I really do understand that. Um, and so, but you know, if you look at that coupled with the vulnerability, I think that uh, it certainly didn't cross my radar in the beginning and I would imagine it wouldn't cross most people's radars if it's just a, hey, do you have any other comments? But if we point to the height and we identify what existing height is on average with a buffer in there um, and what code currently allows you know, that might, I think many people will be able to draw the conclusion that the existing code allows for houses that are in excess of 10 feet over our tallest existing contributing homes. And that, that might garner some attention. Yes, I, I agree. We, we would need to get um, an accurate measurement of that structure though in, for us to um, be able to um, you know give that structure maybe as an example um, making sure that it's measured according to how the zoning ordinance um, measures height um, but I I completely agree that we should have additional explanation in I don't know if there's something in the FAQ section, maybe. Yeah, I don't see anything in the design guidelines. I just yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, that might be a really good place to put it. Again, yeah. it's kind of irrespective of the height restriction, I, I really think that's a good thing to try to clarify. Because I'll be honest, if you haven't ever had the need to apply for a building permit, you don't know the difference between a zoning ordinance and a guideline. And I mean, you don't even know what a zoning ordinance is. You just mm -hmm. you, so, I mean, in theory you do, but in practice you don't. Through that, that's not a comment on ignorance. That's just fact. And most of us don't don't. To your point, most of us don't dwell in that kind of stuff, right? So, I think as much as we can make this plain, I think we're we will help people with the whole HOD process in general. Yeah, I th I think the FAQ might be. Uh a good place and it's it comes before the design guideline and the zoning ordinance amendment pages true sarah could you scroll down just a bit i see yeah right um building permit contributing non-contributing so maybe an explanation here it doesn't look like we have that explanation but maybe an explanation here um, I, I mean, something I think as simple as a zoning ordinance dictates what is and is not permissible by law to be built. Um, when you file a building permit, you are filing it against, or not against, but you know, to be reviewed against what law allows to make sure you're in compliance with that law. There's a key yeah. way 
and, and the HOD is outside of that process in a large way. It, it, it is part of that process because it mandates an A or it kicks you into and mandates an A or B review, but, but it doesn't um, require in and of itself a special permit process because in and of itself, it still uses the same underlying zoning ordinance laws that a non HOD home would use. I think that, you know, if there's a way to speak much more plainly than I just did about the nuance, I think that's important to mm. share. I, yeah, I would agree, especially if we're considering, you know, a, a adding a, a question about it. I think we need a, a further explanation about it. Um, I'm not sure that, is there a, a place where we even talk about what the underlying zoning is? I know in um, my staff report, I cert I do, but I don't know that we've done that here. Um, I don't think we do because I continue to field questions about, oh, an HOD would necessitate a permit where I wouldn't need one if I didn't have an HOD. Uh, right, no. <laughs> Factually, fundamentally incorrect. I know that we have that purple chart and I know it says, this is what you need a permit for, this is what you don't. Not entirely sure why it's a perpetuated myth, I, you know, Mm -hmm. Having worked on a few homes, there are definitely some interior spaces or some exterior renovations that clearly did not pull a permit. So I'm not sure if they did it in the middle of the night or what. But, um, so maybe that's what's going on. But, I, you know, I don't think people are trying to skirt law. So I, I, I just think there's a fundamental misunderstanding about. I don't know. I don't I don't know if it's zoning or if it's the building permit process. I'm not sure. Mm hmm. So, Sarah, what is the paragraph above this? Could could you scroll up a bit? Um, yeah, let's see. So, zoning or to create. So, so would it be? Yeah, I'm sorry. Would it be appropriate to put an explanation of what the underlying zoning is here, so that people understand what the. Um, what the parameters are now and um, so at least there's some yeah. con context, right? Right. Um, there's a reference to the underlying zoning ordinance in the draft text language, but it doesn't provide the details as to what that underlying right. zoning ordinance, what the development standard is and what the regulations are. So we can um, summarize the development standards for the R3 zoning district. And then um, before before this and then yeah, and then yeah, this. yeah, I, in, I think in that's part. Yeah, that compares the and then we can do the comparison or explanation as to what the design guidelines will do versus what the zoning ordinance regulations would mean. Um, so we can add that in the FAQ portion, I think. Um, the summary, the comparison summary. Correct. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Kay, you have your hand up. Right. I think I think um, along with height, you need to talk about the setbacks for the you said R3. Because yeah. I think um, that there is a misconception that people are going to be required some different setback than that. And um, I, I think they need to know that, you know, somebody can build all the way up to that setback line right. um, in, in 35 feet. I mean, that's a big structure and it can still <laughs> kind of look, you know, mid-century modern, but just be a big one. And, um, you know, I think that that's fair for them to understand. OK, I agree. I think I think the clearer we can be, the better. Yeah, yeah, we can include um, setback and other um, standards that would that are applicable to the R3 zoning district and what potentially would be reviewed by the ARB, but are not changed um from the underlying zoning district so we can we can provide that this uh, explanation yeah that context it, and that that is something that um holland hills is already running into 
Well, that's all the more reason to try to tighten that up in ours. Mm -hmm. I think we have another okay. hand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our eyes to see Kay. Does it, um, Kay, do you still have a comment or? No. Okay. Um, and then, so we'll we'll do the comparison between um, what the design guidelines, um, uh, 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 <laughs> how the design guidelines are applied versus how the zoning ordinance is uh, applied. We'll do that in the FAQs. And then here um, in the draft language before the zoning ordinance, we'll give an, ex uh, an explanation of what the current zoning ordinance is and what the standards are for the current zoning ordinance and then they'll see what we're proposing and then in the poll we'll add a question about do you support uh, further restrictions and whatever that so let's talk about that now because we're, we're uh, yeah let's talk about the question that we want to ask in the poll since we're going to add that question in um so we've given them the context between the two zoning ordinance and design guidelines. We've offered an explanation of what the zoning ordinance is and what the standards are. And now we want to ask our question, and it may be two, um, about the height, further height restrictions at, at a minimum. So we probably wanted after this question, do you support the establishment of the HOD? And then we can ask, if so, do you um, do you want to see or do you anticipate um, additional regulations in the zoning ordinance? Um, we we could say just height, or is, is there more? I mean, do you want to ask for additional, you know, setback? So, yeah, right. Edith has her her hand up, and let's, let's. I think she had she had some original language. So let's, Edith, did you have something to? Yeah, I was going to say. I think that I I know. So Lily, I I get it where we're going with this. So I think that I'm not sure if I would tie the you know. Do you establish? Once you've once you've agreed to a historic overlay, do you also agree to further restrictions? I think we don't need a of this than that. I think it can mm -hmm. be do you support the establishment of the historic overlay district for the Homes Run Acres neighborhood. Yes, no, or no opinion. And then it could just be furthermore, do you support or don't, not even furthermore, do you support additional underlying zoning changes for this historic overlay district or, or for the Homes Run Acres neighborhood that carry with them height restrictions and setback restrictions, period, keeping in mind that both of these would be changing the zoning ordinance and would require um, a special permit were one to want to, um, okay, I'm being very wordy, were one to want to go back to the original zoning. So I guess what I'm saying is, or maybe you even lead with current zoning affords a 35 foot height and a 35 foot setback. Most you know, the average house, the, the average contributing home in Homes Run Acres is between 11 feet and 25 feet in height and has a setback of approximately X. Both of these features um, help tie it into the natural setting somehow because that's actually a, a, that's actually a true statement in terms of the way the houses were cited at first. So tie that into the natural setting and then say, in order to change those restrictions, it would necessitate a change in the zoning ordinance, not simply a guideline restriction. Do you support making that kind of a change? And then you can add to that, um, if one were to want to go back to 30, you know, if the change were adopted, if you wanted to go back to 35 foot height and 35 foot setback, one would require a special permit to get back to the original zoning ordinance. If this process were um, adopted, one would re require, because I want to make sure we're not talking about the HOD doing that. So I'm trying to disassociate it from the HOD a little bit. But it's the HOD. Um, my concern is that 
any zoning ordinance amendment change that we're looking at at this point is tied to the HOD. Um, without the establishment of the HOD, we're not looking at a separate zoning ordinance amendment that, that's looking at just height or other okay. standard changes. That I is so why I was thinking. Yeah, no, so maybe actually the way to, to, to segue is the establishment of a historic overlay district affords us the opportunity yeah. to make further restrictions in the underlying zoning ordinance. Maybe that's the way you tie it in. So you say, you know, you, you've established the historic overlay district. That affords you, that allows you to even entertain a zoning ordinance change because without the historic overlay district, you can't just kind of show up and go, hey, I live in this community. Can you restrict the height in my community? That doesn't that, work. That would be a separate, yeah, zoning ordinance amendment, right. um, very separate from um, what the, his, the establishment of the historic overlay district does. And then at that point, there are other questions we may have to answer um, because this process is is initiated because the this neighborhood has a specific um, character that 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 we're trying to preserve with the establishment of the overlay district. Um, so if it's a straightforward zoning ordinance amendment, it, it's the neighborhood is zoned R three, but there are so many other R three neighborhoods in the district in, in within the county so we we will need that historic district establishment in order to apply this very specific change to the zoning ordinance just to this neighborhood um basically <clears throat> instead of applying it to the r3 zoning district otherwise it may be a rezoning so instead of R3, we'll be rezoned to something else that has, you know, um, lower um, height, lower, uh, more restrictive setback, but then it could potentially have more density. So that's a different, totally different uh, process that we would need to um, consider going through. But right now, what makes this neighborhood unique is the architecture and the scale and the siting of the structures, which all can be tied in as a, a historic overlay district. Um, it qualifies it to be a historic overlay district. On top of that, do we want to go in and make additional changes to the underlying zoning district? And so that's how we need to tie it back to the historic overlay district. But I I, I get what I think, what you're saying. So we will draft up some language, in in. Um, and Sarah and Javelin, you. maybe you and I can work on some language too. Sure. And then we can then we can we can cross pollinate. Send yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Maybe if you send us something, a draft. I I think the other important thing to um, put out there is that uh, any future, it's it's in the future. Any change that we're discussing in this question would be a future change, and not a change that would happen with this historic overlay district adoption. Okay, well, that's something super important to clarify. I guess could we put it, it would it be appropriate to put the 18 month revisit in terms of that or, or, or if that's something that um, you, you you're thinking about, I think we need to go to the supervisor and, and talk to her about it um, because it would be up to the supervisor to direct staff to do that. Well, is it important then to ask, I mean, I guess it's the chicken and the egg. Is it important to ask the supervisor if she would even entertain it before we ask? I, I'm definitely um, going to be going back to the supervisor with a report out from this meeting and <laughs> talking to her about um, you know what we've just discussed, that there is some um, uh, some desire from the work group members to have a question about this further restriction um, and, you know, the, the, for, for future and that would that be something that she would support? Okay. Yeah. And I think to Kay's point, I think um, 
height and setback is an important thing to probably look at together. Because again, I mean, uh, you know, what creates the character of this neighborhood is the modest scale home against the mature landscape and siting and both height and setback um, were intentional when the neighborhood was laid out and the sites were created and the house sites, the house, house you know, um, building restriction, the, the buildable areas were, were thought about and, and both setback and height came into play there. So um, maybe we do need to look at those together. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that uh, great conversation. And I think, you know, uh, having this all in front of us as one complete package has helped us really think about the things that um, we want to be including and, and perhaps are missing at this point. Um, I agree. I think it also helps us highlight that this is something that's been going on now since I think we started this process in the fall of 2019. And it is a consistent theme among questions that I get both from supporters and people who are on the fence and people who are against it um, is a misconception about what a zoning ordinance is uh, and what a guideline is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's something really important to highlight at the community meeting um, then and 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 to include in this because not everybody is going to attend the community meeting. Um, some people might just see this information here um, and not get it in another venue. So exactly. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave this open uh, just for any other last minute thoughts or. responses. So Edith, I know that I owe you um, the draft maps and that that's fine. Um, and I'll send the timeline out to the work group and then we'll work on some draft language around the question. Um, you and Sarah or somebody else and we'll try to make those two things meet. Denise, can I just ask one question? Yeah. Um, we've talked about the height, we've talked about the setback. Um, currently, as our HOD study wraps up, are there any underlying zoning changes that the HOD has affected that would require a zoning amendment? So in other words, currently, currently the HOD as a, as a as an entity is is part of zoning, but there, you know, there isn't anything like height or setback that is currently um, part of this. Is that correct? There is the additional restriction in height for um, all principal structures, and uh, Lily, I'll I'll let you speak to that. That's correct. The the underlying zoning district currently has the thirty five foot height limit for. Uh, detached single family dwellings only. Um, accessory structures have a, a different um, height measurement um, and all other principal structures can go up to 60 feet under the current zoning ordinance. Yes, so, sorry. Yeah, I meant the I meant single family dwellings. I'm sorry, I should have clarified that. Yep. So that's single family um, dwellings. Yes, no changes at this time. OK, great. Thank you. Okay, so I will be um, going back to Supervisor Gross and reporting out what what I've heard tonight. Um, I think 
we are going to try to maintain that July uh, community meeting um, if that sounds reasonable to everybody. Of course, that'll be in cooperation with the supervisor's office. So um, if anything changes, I'll let you know. I'll start looking for a date that we can set um, and again, working with the supervisor's office because they will help us uh, reserve that space. Um, but I think that there there is a conversation that we you know, do need to have with her about any uh, follow on measures or um, studies in the future that might come out of the question that we're going to be asking in the poll. So. So I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on the public input site. Um, it, are you all, I'm very ha happy with it. As soon as we get the, the PDF links to work, we'll, we'll <laughs> it'll really lo look, um, we won't have those two PDFs to come, but um, I hope you hope you all are happy with the way it turned out. I think I think it's a great way to present information and walk people through. Uh, you know, the whole thing, the whole process that this month, this month's, well, literally years of work. Now, yeah, so. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That, th thanks, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> uh, Thank you. We appreciate all your hard work on this. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you all hung in there with us too. So <laughs> thank you for hanging hanging in there too. And for all your direction and for your feedback. It's really important that we get this right um, as, as much as we, we possibly can. What is the process, Denise? Or you mentioned that there are a couple things that are coming up with Holland Hills. Is that one of the things that gets reviewed 18 months out that you sort of go, wait, Maybe we need to tighten up the guideline here or there or something, or how does that? No, how, how does that there work? wasn't. No, there wasn't a follow on with Holland Hills. Um, I mean, uh, uh, it, I think it would be raised by the community at some point if they're if they felt that. For some reason, either things were too restrictive or they weren't restrictive enough. Uh, you know, at some point in the future, they'll they'll bring those to our attention or to the supervisor's attention who will you know bring it to staff's attention. So uh, Keith, Keith, you have a question. I just have a curiosity question. I'm assuming you all have been following the uh, HR ARB's uh, consideration of some of the Holland Hills proposals. I just wondered if you had any reaction, uh, any surprises, or do you like the way it's going, or how, how do you think about it? Is that a question to staff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, just wanted to to make sure. Well. Yeah. I will say um, the one observation that I can make is that um, their workload has increased significantly. Um, it, so in the past three months since the HO, um, HOD was adopted for Holland Hills, we've had 12 agenda items from, from Holland Hills, either in workshops or in um, actual applications. And um, we had a five hour meeting the first month after the adoption. So it, it that part of it, I can say <laughs> just um, so from staff, the, the workload has increased significantly. Did you not anticipate that? Though? I would think it's a natural outcome. I, I would I would agree. <laughs> yep. More resources. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Because it's going to be even worse the more HODs you add. It's going to accelerate. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, Kay. Kay, Kay, Kay is on the um, architecture review board and she may be speaking to the workload. <laughs> right. Well, and I just wanted to add that, and they go through a community design review before they get to us. So there's another layer. Um, that y'all don't have. So, yeah. That's true. 
Yeah, I think right now um, we're all just sort of feeling our way with the the, the workload and the uh, the the cases and applying the design guidelines and and all of that. Um, and this this would be you know another really significant increase uh, to the portfolio, if you will, if you up to properties, really significant. So. I think that also speaks to the to why both Holland Hills and Homes for Acres are probably asking for an HOD, which is that there's been an uptick, there's been a transition uptick in applications for building permits. And once you see a few teardowns or you see a few additions that really change the character, I think that's probably what caused people to want to pursue an HOD, those who do want to, to pursue an HOD. So I think maybe there's a trend that was happening anyway towards these houses are coming up on 70 years in age. They all need some massive, um, you know, refreshment, renovation, additions, that kind of thing. So it could be a perfect storm. So I'm sorry, but I'm also grateful. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't a complaint. I don't want anybody to think that we're complaining. It was, it's, uh, it, it, it was, and it's not a surprise. It's not a complaint and it's not a surprise. It's an observation. It just takes some adjustment and we're we're all we're working through those adjustments. So but I would agree with you. I think in, under you know um, normal circumstances, people have things that they want to do to their homes. You know, we we live in them and we like to enjoy our outdoor spaces. We like to update and this is just what we do. And um, the the uh, HODs allow for some uh, some guidance uh, when you have a historic home. So, all right, everybody. Um, I I'm gonna I'm gonna end here unless anybody has anything else to add. I really appreciate the um, the discussion tonight. I think we we uh, did we you know got a lot of good information. Um, and I will definitely take this back to the supervisor and be back in touch with the work group. And then of course, as we set a date for the community meeting, we'll start um, getting in touch with you to broadcast that out for us. So. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks everybody. Thanks for your help. Thanks for Sarah and Lily for um, your support. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, all, right. all of you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night.